Hello viewers, welcome to your favorite program, The Vintage Heritage Show. My name is Jim Briggs. On today's program, we'll be talking about tourism culture in Nigeria, or even in Africa, because you know that tourism culture, if you look at it, the beauty of it starts in Africa with the unique things around it. I'm not alone on this program. I have somebody, very special person, Actually, her name is Sophie Khan. I will leave the rest for her to introduce herself. But she's somebody that will be telling us so much and more about Nigerian culture, tourism, in quote. I know where I'm going to about that. She's going to do the rest. Welcome back to the Vintage Heritage Show. Still on the matter on tourism and culture. Don't forget I have a guest in the studio with me. And we'll be talking about tourism, culture in Nigeria. Uh, welcome to the Vintage Heritage Show. Thank you for having me here. So please, uh, can we meet you? Yeah, my name is Sophia Khan. I'm the CEO of El Khan Travel Center based in Abuja and also the national president of Women in Business and Tourism, Wimbat. Yeah, she has just introduced herself and that's who she is today. Thank you. So we, we're here to talk about tourism, we're here to talk about culture, and um, first and foremost, how does tourism affect every single Nigeria? Well, tourism does affect like it. The tourism industry is defined as a total businesses of activity, goods, um, activities that provide goods and services for business, pleasure, and leisure. Uh -huh. So tourism um, outside your home, maybe outside your base where you stay, you go from here to Kaduna for a business, it's part of tourism. The leisure. The leisure. Whether it's for business, whether it's for... It's still the leisure. Um, leisure, whether it's for pleasure, you just want to hang out with family and friends. You took a transport there. You know, you're going to buy food there. You're going to stay, probably stay in the hotel. So all these things are businesses that come together to make the tourism industry. Very interesting. So if you want to talk about tourism in Nigeria is a huge potential that has been untapped. untapped. <laughs> we have not even, probably we are just scratching the surface of tourism in Nigeria. We have not really gone deep into it. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people in the tourism business, but they don't even know it's tourism. And people don't really see tourism business as a business. They don't see tourism mm. sector as a big business, but it is. Like we say, tourism is the new oil in Nigeria. There are countries that their main revenue comes from tourism. Mm -hmm. And these are countries like Dubai has man-made tourist sites they have created. But in Nigeria, we have natural, God-given, yeah. blessed. There is no state in Nigeria that does not have at least two mind-blowing tourism sites mm -hmm. but unfortunately most of them have been unkept and untouched most of them are dilapidated yeah. most of them are not known so we in the tourist sector tourism sector needs to do something mm -hmm. and the government unfortunately seems not to understand or seems not to care 
I don't know which is which, but I want to believe that they don't understand the potential yeah. in tourism. Because tourism, if they really understand, seems to stand as a pride of a nation yeah. and as a pride of a country. Especially here in Nigeria, you discovered that, like you said, in tourism world, um, everybody is there to achieve something. And everybody is there to fly on something as well. But uh, it's been overlooked. And uh, it being overlooked, I think um, we should come into it. And that's why we're having this platform and this discussion. To know how we can improve in our tourism. Because tourism goes in hands with culture, if you look at it. it you see, I'm not trying to say that I am praising or giving the praises to South Africa. But you see, it's a horrible place to be. Like we know when people will tell you uh, South Africa don't like Nigerians and South Africa, but it's still Nigerians go to South Africa. Yeah. Particularly, I love to be around the South Africans because of their culture, because of their attires. They have never left it behind. But if you look at Nigerian today, because we have no value for tourism, we have no value for our culture. Everything about the world, culture, tourism is gradually going and dying and our children are coming up they don't even know which to follow in the map of tourism and even in the area of culture jane even you and i don't know our history that's true that's so true. how will our children know our history that's true and that because there are so many things so, coming up now that we read in the book and if you google it you now discover it and um it seems to be as if how comes it's not actually working now yeah because we don't know our history, we don't know uh, where we're coming from. So our children, imagine us not knowing our, our history. So what do we tell our children? We tell them about Europe. We tell them about America. Exactly. We yeah. tell them about uh, UK. Yeah. Because, and we take them there. But how many of us are really taking our children to Obudukatu Ranch? Yeah. There you go. Let's and even we'll talk about Obu, but then <laughs> you, you were brought up, you know, you were born and raised in Kano. And I know you know this Gorondu Sehil. Yes. And do you know that um, even when you talk about culture and still tourism, it is a place to sight on. Yes. But you see, that place is gradually not even being recognized in Kano. That's it's true. not known. It's not, not known. It, it right. are not being given attention. It's not known. It's not talked about. Um, if not, you mentioned it now. I've actually forgotten about Gorondusi. Okay, when we come back from this break, <laughs> okay. we really have to talk about this Gorondusi because we are in Kano. And she's a Kano brought up. Okay. Even a very strong Kano brought up. <laughs> and that was why I took her back to Gorondusi because that's the Gorondusi is how we go to school in those days. <laughs> we'll be right back on the Vintage Heritage Show. <laughs> okay, welcome back on the Vintage Heritage Show, still on culture and tourism. And don't forget with me here is Sophie Khan. We're talking about culture and tourism. So we're talking about Gorondi Hill. Do you have any biography about that place? If no, you can remember I, I don't have anything. And I've actually forgotten about Gorondi <laughs> Really? <laughs> but I know there was a hill there. Yes, I knew when we were in school, we yeah. used to go up there yes. and everything. We, I really don't know. You see, these are things that are not put out there for people to, you can imagine us that had knew it during our secondary school, school days. days and we ha I had forgotten about it so talk so, about the children now. so you can imagine somebody that doesn't even know or the children how will they know there's something like that that's true uh, you know these are sites that need to be enhanced exactly. they need to be um, bring back to life bring back to life they need things to be done to it that was then, why i brought the attention of guru yeah because it's a place somebody could want to go, take a sight, see. Apart from even the Gorondusi, have you heard of Gida Makama? Yes. Good. These are places like this that uh, we should once in a while take the children of today. Yeah, even yeah. the Kanu Wall, the Great Kanu Walls. Although they are fallen now yeah. and all those things. And but okay, if they are fallen, um, Sophie Khan, what do you think can be done about it? It can be preserved. Okay, good. It can be preserved. It can be... 
it can be maintained. I will tell you something. I went to Turkey, Tarsus to be precise, where Apostle, Apostle Paul was born. Mm -hmm. In the house where he was born. Can you imagine how many years ago that that was? That was preserved. You see the well in that house. Yeah. The, the house has fallen, but they had a way of preserving it to show the people history. that this is where Apostle Paul was born, and this is the place. This is where the house was standing. But the well was still there, and we all drank water from wow. the well. <laughs> Do you understand? We went to, we saw places where um, great histories were like, you know, something you see out of the Bible mm. and all those stories they tell mm. how, you know, and the way Islam came into Turkey, all those stories are being preserved. The historical part the of story, it was still there. Yes. It was still alive. And I think why you still met it that way was because the government there worked about it. And preserved, and preserved it. it. Yes. Yeah. So, but you see, this thing, we just allow it to die. There are monuments, are, a lot of monuments are gone in yeah, Nigeria. Exactly. The last time I saw a picture of the uh, canoe wall, I almost wept. Wow. Because the thing is going down by the day and nothing. And like I said, I think our government do not understand the huge potential in tourism. Okay. So they don't care. Yeah. They don't know that tourism can become number one foreign exchange in, exactly. in for Nigeria. The tourists coming from Italy does not want to see skyscrapers. He doesn't want to see five stars hotel. Yeah. They want to see that very hot exactly. that was lived in. We go to South Africa and we go to the Man Nancy Mandela's house where he was there i don't know what has happened to amino kano's house today really? remember when we were in school we used to pass through there exactly, and that, yeah. that is a huge tourist site hmm. and that's true i think you you the table he using now yes the table it. he read on the bed he slept on where he says his prayers all those things are what people want to come and see about the Late great Aminu Kanu. But who knows what's happening to the house now? I don't know. But these are things that attract tourists. And another thing is we must preserve our culture. Yeah. We must preserve our history. Yeah. We must preserve our tourist site. The Kanu Dai Pit is dead. Yeah. The last, that time, is, the last time I checked, like I told you, it was really confusing. But I still believe that we're working towards it to just do the same thing we're doing here to see how we can bring it back. Because yeah. it's a history that shouldn't be there. It's over 500 years old. The old man there said that. Yes, yeah. because I've done a research. I was trying to do a story on that Canada IP for my magazine. It's over 500 years old. Those pits are still there. Yeah, no, yeah, they are still there. They are still there. Yeah. And the materials produced from there are nice. They are culture. So I heard. So we need to preserve it. We need to still do it. We need to still have it. We don't... Gucci is not our thing. <laughs> and uh, Gucci is not our thing. And whatever, whatever, what are the designers? This we are wearing yeah. is not us. This is the Middle East dressing. dressing yeah. But that is what we have adapted to Our now. Self. Ourselves. Yeah. And threw away all the culture. So we, this uh, is not our culture. Our culture is the Kampala. Yes. Our culture is <laughs> Our culture is Iran Buba. Do you understand? Our culture is the George. Okay, if you go to the... Uh, we in the north here, we, we've gone to Abaya. Yeah. It is not our, our culture. culture. The southern nurse has gone to western wear, wearing trousers, skirt, and it that is, is not our clothes. There's nothing wrong with west wearing western clothes, but while you're wearing western clothes, please preserve our culture. culture yeah. Those are our traditional wear. Those are our ashoki. Those are our uh, adire. 
all those things we need to preserve them and yeah, show that, that really off. reminds me that adira is for us yes and and a lot of but you know something good adira has started coming back did you notice that yes yeah it's coming back in its beauty because a lot of people are um i read i read the story sometime somebody went to america and a white lady brought out an adire material and said uh her sister got her this when she visited nigeria or something and this lady is into a direct product a production or something and he said this material you're holding was made by me is one oh. of my is one oh. of my productions you can see the pride so you see and the woman brought it out and she's looking at it she's admiring it but she didn't know what to do with it she just kept it as a souvenir if somebody had made it if we do fashion our uh, our clothes style it our mm. own style these people will wear it well still on the vintage heritage show we're talking about the values we should add in our culture in our tourism in our lives a lot of things that has really gone beyond that we just think that things could get back better and that's what we're discussing here on the conversation on tourism and culture we'll go on a short break and come back but when we come back there is something itchy that i'm we're going to be talking about before we draw the curtain close stay tuned we'll be right back <music> Welcome back on the Vintage Heritage Show. Don't forget we're talking about tourism, culture. And we've really touched so much of it, especially Kano. A lot of tourism is so broad that if we keep talking about it, well, it's going to take hours to live here today. But something is right here to talk about, especially with Sophie Khan. You are the national president of Wimba. And um, you've been doing something great, beautiful there. And, and I've seen amazing things happening there. And that was really what drew my attention to begin to think culture, to begin to think tourism. And I now discovered that we have a lot, a whole yeah. lot sure. as Africans to give and to receive. Um, what was your thought when we talk about Wimbert? Wimbert is the women in business and tourism. Mm -hmm. Wimbat is unique in the sense that when people talk about tourism, they think tourism has to do with travel, hospitality, mm. probably hotel and transport. No. Um, there are countries that are making huge um, revenue from tourism. Mm -hmm. Tourism is a whole lot of business. Like when I define tourism, it's the total of businesses. Mm. There, there is long value chain in tourism. You have the, you have fashion tourism. You have uh, agricultural tourism. You have food tourism. You see people doing food festival. Um, you hear people doing um, religious tourism. You have medical tourism. You have the fashion tourism. Yeah. You have the culture, art and culture tourism. You have. Uh, uh, what do you call it now? You have educational tourism. And you can see that our charts. Yeah, in women in business. In women in business. We, are, we, are, we, we cover all these areas. Our members are drawn from all these areas. We have farmers as members. We have fashion designers as our members. We have um, doctors. We have people in construction. The only reason why we don't have team parks in Nigeria or multipurpose hall where um, events can be taking place, event hall, is because the people in construction, real estate, they don't understand that there's money to be made in tourism. In tourism. The people in, um, in fashion, they will not promote it yeah. because they don't understand that you can have a fashion week that will attract people from all over the world yeah. and do this and come and see what your culture, your fashion is. Not come and do Western Style. styles. No. Our traditional attires, our traditional attires. That somebody told me two weeks ago, and I was amazed, that there was a time that Nigeria had 
over 250 textiles company that's true today we have if they are up to 20 but they are no more than 20 it's a shame why because we have gone to gucci exactly. versace uh, leviton and all those things it is not us so we rather we as it stands today we are export we are importing nations oh. we are not exporting nations yeah. because but we have all these things to export where is our um textiles where to produce but, but it? Sophie, if you look at it too i know some local people who have invested in what you call zobo you know zobo yes and uh, these are the culture and these are the tourism we're yeah. talking about and um they are doing well they are well they're doing well and they still take it outside this country so i think um but, but in what quantity no. what is the a, a, what what is in a one to ten it's probably one that's why we have this conversation here yeah. and that so is that what we will be happy and proud of what we have yes because uh, you, when you talk about samia or what you call it tamarine sometimes these white people come here and they tell you they want to go to kaswan kurumi i've seen them so many times there and i'll be wondering you see them buy things in their expensive way and they are so happy they buy a lot of it and when they come they just come in their natural way take this thing zoom they go off and over there they value it so much so i think what if i understand you very well we should add values we we'll add values to it and even the atampas we say we are wearing today mm. we call them our traditional it's just the style that is our traditional where's the fabric coming from china mm -hmm. so if you look at it holistically you find that that is not even from us so we are not getting anything out of it we are still importing them so, so if i get you right that means because of lack of the attention we have lost all our manufacturers and the thing that is supposed to happen in nigeria yes. so now it's coming out that's why you see in the in, in winbert we look manufacturing because we want to start manufacturing our my fabric we want to encourage the manufacturers to manufacture it and when you take this fabric people want to see where it's produced that's tourism when we do our fashion show when we do if we if we have a great we but is not only in uh nigeria is in other countries because it's a pan-african thing yeah we want to promote africa we want to make sure that africa will be number one destination in the next 10 years and that is the dream of Wimba. yes that's the dream of Wimba. So we are going to be in every country in Africa. We are going and individually in those countries we are going to produce and do and develop and promote and market each everything that that country is best in. Like I when I met with the Tanzania ambassador, he was telling me about their medical um, tourism, how they are planning to do a cancer center that oh. is of world class. And I told him if you have a world class cancer center in tanzania i will not take my clients to india i would rather bring them to, to tanzania, tanzania that's true. because we we'll need to promote africa. africa and it must be in a way that we will collaborate together partner with other african countries so we are looking in every sector in the tourism industry okay. we are looking at the culture promoting culture promoting festival promoting our food and um music, music and our definitely. themes you know we want to tell the nollywood that they must have a way of promoting mm. tourist sites in nigeria exactly. and we bet in the women in business and tourism we intend to develop all these die dead dying sites in nigeria and promote them and market them and also attract investors in all the sectors wow. for tourism because tourism is the new oil Good. in Nigeria. What else do you want me to say? She just killed it there. She said tourism is the new oil in Nigeria. And I want to believe it because I know that Africa is made up and built up of tourism and culture. Africa is a beautiful place where even people come for vacation and get themselves, you know, enjoyed before going back. Actually, there's no time for this. I wish this can continue. But I know you have one word for the viewer before we say bye-bye to us. Yes, I just want the viewers to know that 
you need to see your place. You need to know your country. We promote Nigeria, traveling Nigeria. You are from Zanfara, please go and see the water in um, Bayosa. I see how people live village on water. You are from Z uh, Bayosa, all you know is water. Can you come down to Yobe and see the desert? Travel Nigeria. We have a beautiful country. Mind-blowing destination. You cannot say security is stopping you. You go to South Africa, South Africa is not safe. Everywhere has security problem. I think Nigeria is safe to travel. Travel Nigeria. She've said it all. That's so if you can. And with this, we have come to the end of the Vintage Heritage on this episode today. On behalf of the entire production crew, we'll meet again same time, same station, on Zamani TV. Stay good. And don't forget your culture. And always swim in your culture and tourism. Don't forget it's all about you. Like she said, <laughs> try to visit and try to collaborate. That's the message for today. So stay good and have a beautiful view. Goodbye.